Try and never know where you could end up. I set a goal, set a pace, one day we'll see. One day we'll see. I'm singing. Oh. Every step is calling me. I hold my breath, staring down my dream. I fall back down. I don't care what they say. I'm gonna go and who? Oh. Every step is calling. I'm gonna go and ooh, get it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cassie B. Wow. What is that all about? Wow. wow. 
Oh, yeah, that, is that an old one? What is that? Is it? That's an original. That's um, I just wrote it about kind of being fearless and just get out there and Wow, being get fearless. It, Aiming know? for some of those notes is being fearless. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what? Let me say this. You're because proud of her. I, <laughs> I've, watched, the best. I've, I've seen her perform for the last two years. Yeah. And every time I watch her sing, it amazes me because when she hits those notes, yeah. Yeah. it's effortless. It's without any yeah. effort. Yeah. It just... It just comes out, and I've been telling you that for like two years. Day and I one. tell you, I've seen you He's perform married. now for over two minutes. And, yeah. uh, I'm <laughs> equally as impressed. <laughs> so, so, t so where did you start? When did you start in music? When did this whole deal begin for you? Well, we actually, Ryan and I met, uh, we were performers at SeaWorld. What? And Hold yeah. on a minute. Yeah. What, do you have wetsuits on the whole thing? Was it like the I Shamu wish. experience? Could you I used bust to tell people I would come out. Bust and out a little something from the Shamu show. Yeah, like, you, you hey, I still remember? Yeah. You guys still remember the Shamu show? Did you have? Oh, Come on, can you guys play us something from Cyril? Well, think about it, because maybe, yeah, something. Robert, I would love Robert didn't perform with us there, but Robert we can Robert play anything, though, so I'm pretty list. sure he could pick it up. Yeah. yeah. So, Was it one of those fish shows you did? Um, I hosted the Shamu Christmas show for about five years. Nope. But then we were in Madagascar live together. Wow. It was that Madagascar fun show. That's so. a great gig. It was really great. Yeah. 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 And you were in a Star Trek band. Yeah, what, Star Wars band. Yeah, yes. Star Wars band. Oh, wow, <laughs> that is a sin. I don't know. <laughs> Dustin, yeah. Dustin, Parker from our, Dustin Parker, our stage manager uh, here, will tell you, who carries yeah. a real lightsaber. There will be a cling on you later <laughs> or yeah. something. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, so the, wait a minute. So did I missed, was it, did you say Star Wars band? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Talk so about, what is we that? do a little Star Wars tribute band. Uh -huh. uh, we're called the Millennial Falcons. Okay. And uh -huh. uh, our biggest day is May 4th, usually. Oh, May the fourth we'd be with. Yeah, yeah, yes. they did that. No, it's cute. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> so like yeah, that. but we um yeah. we kind of try to specialize all sorts of different shows for different events and you know things around town. So we have a '90s tribute. You know, we do a ton of covers. We do top 40s. We do weddings and corporate and all that stuff. And then our Star Wars band. You know what I want to hear? I want to hear you do that part at the beginning of that. Oh. That's Star Trek. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so but it's I, still a, it's a hard note to hit. I'm going to tell you. So for us as uh, as a band, it was most of my guys who have played on big big stages and small small stages yeah. make a living mm -hmm. as musicians. And suddenly COVID hits. Oh boy. And and it's not like they're going back to their um, their insurance adjuster job or right. their. Uh, stand up, I mean, it's, it's just like you with, with stand up comedy and virtual dried events, up. your stuff dried up. How did you guys, what, we pivoted into Zoom video, <laughs> yeah. so, which is now completely unoriginal, but now we're doing live streams. So what, how are you guys surviving during that? That's a tough one for you guys. Luckily, I'm a hairstylist also, so I've been able to go back to that what? recently because I mean, they shut us down too. So yeah. it's it, you're you in know. the worst two industries, boy. I if know. only you were a bartender, then you could have <laughs> back out all three ways. Yeah. That yeah. Is. Are, now, are you guys keeping music going somehow? We kind of just started getting back together. Just you know, everybody's been trying to settle into what they're doing to make ends meet right now. So <laughs> it's been hard to yeah. actually come together and rehearse. But the three of us actually kind of realize this is probably the first thing, you know, the biggest amount we're going to be able to get sooner yeah. than later. I have a suggestion for uh, So we're Robert. dream makers, people. We're Wait. dream makers yeah, here. Yes. Yeah. That's where it all happens. Yeah. Robert, I, I would go to Robbie Rivera. Sounds so much, huh? Robbie. Yeah. Robbie Rivera, Robbie Rivera. Robbert. sounds so much more rock and roll. And instead, of Ryan, and instead of Ryan Kilpatrick, Ryan Kill. The Ryan Kill man. Kill. Ryan, oh, yeah. That's right. Ryan Kill. And instead yeah. of the Cassie B project, it's the Ryan Kill project. Ryan Kill. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, okay. Ryan Kill, Kathy B. <laughs> and I can't Kathy help but think of Bill Murray doing that thing he did on Saturday Night Live with Star Wars. Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars. Can you, can, can, you, can you guys bust out literally a minute of a Star, oh, a Star Wars? Star Trek with, 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 Wars. Oh, look at yeah. Rob. Yeah. Come on. Robbie's on. Can you, Robbie, right there. Robert, oh, we, we, so we snuck in some, yeah. Oh, that's the that's the that's the that's, that's the Darth the, Vader. That's the Darth Vader track. Oh, there we are. Look at that. <laughs> all right, well, yeah. they'll be with us all day. Thanks, all you right, guys. Cassie, awesome. 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 Cassie B. Oh. Ryan Kilpatrick. Ryan the Killer. Kill all right. Patrick. Don't we have other guests? What did what, what, uh, what, what you, you set up for us today, yeah, Tommy? Did you, did you, did you know, have a mystery guest today? We Ooh. do. We do have a mystery right, guest we'll when it. everyone is on the set, yeah, including our going. guest that's coming up. Oh. And Ooh, we have we have uh, a regular guest. Before we go. I got um, I got a ton of email 
about our producer, uh, Shelly B. Shelly yeah, Brown? Yeah, yeah. Yes. People want to see more behind the scenes, yeah. like producer people. Because yeah. yeah, if, if you didn't know. And she never I'll get it. Hold on. Here we go. I'll hang, get it. Hang on. I'll get it. Ladies and gentlemen. You know, producers rock. And I am proud to say I'm the first and only producer in, a, in the National Radio Hall of Fame. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, we got that. Uh, okay, anyway. Hey, now, who is our guest <laughs> producer? Who's our you, know fame, boy? you know what? Instead of me telling you right here, no, you how about if we go get him? Go get him. Yeah, work Talk it off. Right and while he goes out there, yeah. lock the door and right. move. That's right. But I'm very happy about it. So I know who our guest is. I don't know if you do or not. Sir. He's the person, the reason I was having yeah, a talk yeah. radio career. Come on over here. Absolutely. Look at that. It's Lee Hacksaw Hamilton. Yes. And the reason for my is, mustache sir. today. I want to talk sports with you from Baja to the Canadian Rocky. <laughs> Up and down the California coast. Oh, my gosh. Wow. You are the reason that I have a talk radio career. Thank you. Blame me. No, <laughs> <laughs> we all can. And the best news is I've gotten to know Lee throughout the years, but I remember yeah. when I was, uh, it was probably four years before I started talk radio, a buddy of mine uh, in, uh, who now lives in Orange County said, have you discovered talk radio yet? I go, no. He goes, you got to turn on the mighty 690 and listen to Lee Hacksaw Hamilton. I, I'm like 25 years old. Yeah, no, I go, what? what? Uh, I turned it on and I never turned it off. And even, even through all the years of, uh, uh, from Baja to the Canadian Rockies, yeah, even yeah. to when you were doing play-by-play -play for the Chargers, I lamented you leaving the Chargers worse than you and your lovely wife Liz did because mm -hmm. it, was, it was Liz it was, ha Liz Hacksaw Liz Hamilton. Hacksaw Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, it's on her license. It I is exactly. Yeah. Buddy, so great to see you, man. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's kind of cool, uh, gentlemen, and I use that term loosely. You, thank you. You, know, you guys are doing very, very well. Um, Fabulous career in San Diego. Yeah. You know, used to work in Cleveland, worst winters of the world, moved to Phoenix, worst summers of the world, uh -huh. and then came to San Diego, America's finest city. Right. How did this all start for you? Like, I, how did radio start for you? I grew up in a sports and journalism background. I grew yeah. up on Long Island. Father was a minor league pitcher. Uncle was a famous sports writer and a World War II journalist wow. in the Pacific Theater. Think about this, getting to do what you wanted to do from age 18 on to where I am now at age 43. Um, Again. <laughs> where were you in those early years? Other, were you in New York? I grew up in New York, went to, went to college at Ohio University, started in small market radio. But think about choosing a job at age 18 right. wow. and doing it your entire career. Yes. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah. A few bumps in the road, yeah, we've all been free Yeah, agents. some downtime, some yeah, vacation we'll, unplanned, but uh, yeah. yeah. You all got in the brown envelope, sign here, right. leave. Oh. Your stuff's in the and you know those meetings are coming. Just, oh, yeah, you know, the funny part about those meetings, yeah. a lot of people don't, <laughs> don't know about radio, is that when you get off the air, you really don't know you're not going to be there the next day. Right. But as you get the, the right as you leave, as you know, yeah. you know that meeting's coming when they say, hey, uh, uh, Russ, hey, yeah. program director Tommy wants to see you. <laughs> they <laughs> never <laughs> want to see me. I must be. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. They, Lee, they, you're, they, a, you're a sports icon, and you know, you have very famous calls through your career. Do you remember the, the very kids. first do you remember the very first time you opened a mic to call a game? High school football, Appalachia, Logan, yeah. Ohio. Wow. Uh, small radio station. Yeah. Uh, did an unbelievable amount of play by play after after I came out of college. A quick question. Play by play and color, are, are those two different positions in the broadcast booth or not you for just, you they weren't or they you were just you roll did them both. all into one. I did play by play and my color analyst on the Charger broadcast yeah. painted the picture. Yeah. I mean it was it was cool. That is cool. And so I I got the chance to do a lot of things at a very young age and I met a lot of people. And as we know in the broadcast industry, who you know, right place, right time, et cetera, sure. et cetera. Yeah. Sure. So I wound up going to Cleveland to do hockey. Sorry. <laughs> I had a good time. <laughs> I bet. But well, Cleveland you're, you're and hockey. Well, hockey for a Two living. things I would never do. Go to Cleveland and watch or play hey, or even listen may, to hockey. May I ask, what year was that? Uh, I started in small market radio in Appalachia in 1968. Awesome. Went to middle-sized market upstate New York in 71. Went to the major leagues Cleveland in 75. Yeah. Wound up going to Phoenix. Uh, and doing Arizona State Sun Devil football and pioneering sports talk radio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. Uh, yeah. I just want to talk like you now that you're sitting in front of me. I don't know why, but <laughs> I, I want to talk I sports talk. with you. I want to talk cookie chainsaw Randolph because he's been on our show a couple of times and he says you're the reason 
that he's the chainsaw. He's, he's, from Dave Shelley and Chainsaw. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, he stole the nickname. I've yet to get the royalty check, but that's okay. We're friends. <laughs> that's funny. So I, 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 I went to Phoenix, and then 87, I came to San Diego because uh, I had wow. the chance to do the NFL. And, and who was quarterback back then in 87? Well, it was Dan Fouts this last right. year. Oh, yeah. nice. So I got in on the tail end of what was greatness, and it became really bad for an extended period of time. And then we got really good, and we had the rush to the Super Bowl. The LT and days and stuff. You wait a second. It could have been yeah. worse. You could have been here when Harlan Savari was our head coach. Oh, wow. <laughs> Tommy Prothrow. <laughs> when Tom, yep. Tom Prothrow wasn't bad. Harlan Savari and the Dames when Dwayne Thomas came oh, over yeah. from the Dallas Cowboys. It was the worst charger. If you grew up in this town, like the three of us. It was had. fascinating. I grew up on Long Island. Island and I was a sports fan, and yeah. I remember the old American Football League yeah, right. and the, the original San Diego Chargers. With Bambi. Bambi. I Gary remember, Garrison, I remember in December on Long Island in the snow and cold looking at TV and seeing the palm trees, Balboa Stadium, yeah. John Hadle, Excuse me. All those guys. And it made you want to do what? It well, made you want to go to California. Well, I wound up going to California by accident, but... <laughs> Took the I, wrong I, turn at Phoenix. Wait, but I've said this. <laughs> do you remember... You guys don't listen to me on talk I'm, radio. No. You remember, because you know I've talked about this. I always said mm -hmm. football in San Diego uh, as an economic driver had nothing to do with us winning or losing. It oh. was about Johnny Lunchbucket sitting in negative 16 degrees, mm -hmm. watching us in November as the palm trees are swinging and the sweeping views of Torrey Pines Glider Port yeah. and the Coronado Bay Bridge. Chamber of Commerce, And then three suddenly hour they're making plane tickets to come out here. Yeah. We've lost all of that economic impact because tourism is our number two market driver in this right. city. We've lost all of that because we've lost NFL football. Will it ever come back, in your opinion, here? Unless somebody writes a check to build a stadium, no. And really? it's sad. And yeah. the, I mean, I, I went from doing sports talk shows and doing NFL football in San Diego and in Seattle to sitting and watch the Spanos family yank the Chargers out of here after 55 Which years what of loyalty. Which is what happened, right? Exactly. What, 55 years of loyalty. And I was working TV at that point in time doing sports anchoring, and they sent me out in front of the Charger practice facility mm -hmm. as the fans were dropping their clothes off and right. setting them on fire. Right. And I'm sitting there doing these live reports about the demise of the franchise and what they did to the city of San Diego. So, oh, man. Let, let me ask you this. I grew, up, I grew up here in San Diego all my life. I've been a fan since Hadle to Gary Garrison. But should I be mad at the Chargers? When we come back. Should I be mad at them? He's going to tell us exactly if we should be mad yep. or not. Because Lee Hacksaw Hamilton joins us here on the program, of course. And long story short is that every one of our careers can be thanked because of that guy. Because you blame affected me. all of us. Yeah, I'm going to play. I'm actually going to blame you. It's a good thing. Lee Hacksaw Hamilton on the air. KUSI with Rusty Nails, Little Tommy, and Big Sully. You like that one? Cassie Beach Rogers singing for us. Shut up over there. Bob, it's a good boy, Mosey. Long time not to show. All day long, I dream of you. I can't stop. The only thing running through my brain is you and your touch driving me insane. You talk, you smile, leave me begging you for more. Myself banging on your door. Love me like you leave me. Love me like you need me. Yeah, your love completes me. So love me oh so sweetly. Love me like you need me. Yeah, your love completes me. Cassie so B project. Man, man, Cassie B. Gracias. I love her. So we got Ryan. Can you hear every week for us? Huh? Oh, sure. That's oh, on man. guitar. Robbie Rivera. Huh? I'm loving it. Lee, are you a music family? You, yes. What, what, what's, what you, what's your go-to? Yeah. Uh, British Invasion. British? Back in the day. Really? The first oh. wave? Big yeah. time. Yeah. Really? Not no the cult, kidding. but more the, uh, yeah. The Beatles. Well, the, the UK for us, of course, not anyone says the cult. Well, British Invasion is Beatles, Hermit and the Hermits. Well, it came right? around Stones. twice. Stones. Well, wait a minute. Stones. Stones. You grew Stones. up in Long Island, so in 1964, February of 1964, you're in New York. When the Beatles landed. And how was that as a it kid? It was eerie. It was weird. I remember sitting in our living room February watching 9th. the Beatles on Ed Sullivan TV. Wow. And my, my sister <laughs> cool. sitting and crying watching, <laughs> tele watching <laughs> television. Crazy. Just, yeah, that's crazy. All right. So, so my, we, my question is this. We were let's reset it. We were talking about Spanos. Yeah. We were talking about Russ has T-shirts he's selling. He can't say what it is on right. the show. Spanos. Bottom line is, is no. that people are not happy with Alex Spanos, or I mean Dean Spanos and the Spanos family for pulling the rug out for money. 
basically. They Rightfully. thought they would have a billion dollar valuation going to, to, to Los Angeles. In my estimation, I learned this from you, there's 24 things to watch in LA, the Chargers are the 25th. <laughs> <laughs> God, what late. They have the lowest home TV ratings home market of any team in the NFL. Just under uh, women's field hockey at UCLA. Yeah. If I'm not and mistaken. for some reason, that makes me feel good. <laughs> but I'm confused because I am a lifelong Charger fan. I grew up here in San Diego. They are so I dead remember to me. from Hadel. I remember they even so Wayne dead. Clark. I remember all the quarterbacks, and I was even on a junior Charger league. Yeah. And uh, so, so should I feel sad? Should I feel mad? at the Chargers for leaving? I have a big website, LeeHacksawHamilton.com. I oh. write a ton of sports every day. If you okay. knew how to read, you'd be able to follow. I love Three it, points Lee. to Russ. Thank but, you. But anyhow, <laughs> so I do these mini polls. What do you think? Fans react. The fans universally, when Phillip Rivers was there as quarterback, wanted the Chargers to go 16-0 and because of Phillip Rivers, mm -hmm. but because Spanos owned the team based on what he did here, mm -hmm. they want him to go 0-16. They will never be forgiven here. <laughs> and in all seriousness, I'll never understand why the family, which had done a lot of philanthropic stuff in sure, San Diego, sure. would turn around and do what they did, scorched earth policy, right. and ruin all the relationships so they could go to L.A. where the league didn't want them there, and the fans, fans didn't, didn't want, want them, them there, there, and the media didn't want them there. Wow. Wow. The Chargers are basically the Bob Filner of the NFL. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, if you think about that, remember, X -Fair, remember the Filner headlock? Yeah. Remember X -Fair? yeah. Um, uh, but my question for you is, if you think in terms of the stadium, and you talk about uh, if somebody doesn't write a check, what I think people miss is the fact that the stadium is a civic asset. It, it, you have to ask yourself, in 1965, when the stadium was built with 100% taxpayer money for $25 million, um, didn't it make San Diego a better place to live? Think about the Garvey years. Think about Major League Baseball. Think yep. about the Stones, Cheap Trick, Billy Joel, the Harvest Festival. Think about even streets. Billy there. Graham. Think about the, the Holiday Bowl. Have I mentioned the Chargers once? Not one time have I mentioned the Chargers there. So what I'm saying is, it's a civic asset. Why wasn't the message from, from Dean Spanos, why wasn't the message, guys, we're just your biggest renter. We're just your biggest, we're, we're gonna take care of it, but this is a civic asset, it's not Charger Stadium. Isn't that a mistake they made before they left it when trying to get that on the ballot? And get well, it, understand huh? this, to get anything accomplished in San Diego has really been hard. Sure. And you can go back decades upon decades. There was five mayors that talked about that very thing. Exactly. Airports. I mean, look, at, look at the struggle to get the convention center built. Right. And tourism is our biggest industry Absolutely. Now. Number look one market the, driver passed, passed uh, be just behind military. So yes, it is the number one. Look at one the industry. struggle to get Petco Park built. You realize that Larry Lucchino and John Moores fought through 22 lawsuits Gee. to finally get that Taj Mahal built. And look what it's meant, not just to the Padre baseball franchise, look what it's meant to the gas lamp quarter. Oh, well, the concentric circles out of all the way to San Diego. Wow. It's like if you look at Staples Center, Lee, and you look at what that area looked like, it looked a lot like the East Village does, right, or did prior yeah. to Petco Park. Look at LA Live. And then if you, if you go to concentric circles as far as property values go outside of Staples, you're going to see everything's gone up, just like at Petco Park. Now, why wouldn't we do something like that? Well, understand this, though. Mm -hmm. The cost to build something is unbelievable. Sure. Yeah. And Fans, taxpayers in every city across America were revolting about spending tons of money to give something to a rich man. But that was yeah. the, that. But that was where I think that, the flawed was the flawed uh, uh, communication because you weren't lying in the pockets of a billionaire. You were building a civic asset exactly. yeah, yeah. that happened to have a billionaire as a tenant now, for ten days a year. Understand this though: for decades upon decades, we really had bad leadership. And huh. it was until the point that got Faulkner names. got here yeah. and the city and the county joined hands and they came up with local funding, mm -hmm. local funding with the NFL funding, with Spanos' funding. If they had put that on the ballot, it would have passed. Instead, Spanos muddied the waters and put yeah. a second can thing I, on the ballot to build downtown, Kevin, which is never going to work. And now Kevin the, Faulkner, unfortunately, yeah. terms out. Can I just say this out loud? Go Kevin ahead. Faulkner for governor. Yes. Oh, good God, we need Kevin Faulkner for governor. I have more questions. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what. We, we have a mystery answers. guest. And we have a mystery guest, and Cassie B's going to play us out here, but Lee Hacksaw Hamilton is our guest today. I'm so excited to have him here. I, we haven't even talked all the other sports in San Diego. There isn't any other Padres sports. Padres are doing well. We got a sports arena coming. And uh, maybe play by play uh, hacky sack uh, kind of here with Lee. Mystery right. guest time. Yeah. All right. Is a mystery guest.
related to or have to do with sports somehow? Sport related? Are we just going to let Lee play? You know what? We're going to play the game next. All right, very good. Lee, Hacksaw Hamilton on the air. Can't explain all the feelings that you're making me feel. My heart's in overdrive and you're behind the steering wheel. From Baja to the Canadian Rockies, up and down the West Coast, I want to talk sports with you. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Lee Hacksaw Hamilton. And joining me in studio, my special guest, the big Sully, little Tommy, and Rusty T. Nail. Oh, my God. That's like when, uh, when Chainsaw did it in the match. Yeah. You know? And it's so cool. All really? right. First one thing, if you, well, do it, if you do it long enough, you should get good enough. You need to do that. You need to, I'm telling you right now, there's an industry for, I know Jerry Coleman did it for our good friend, Mike Usher, where he did it, he did an answer, he did his voicemail. Oh, right, right, right. Right? You could do, I'm telling you right now, Lee. Put that on your website. There are <laughs> three million people in San Diego that recognize your voice. All right. We have a mystery guest right now. Oh, it's time for mystery guest. Yes. Oh, wait. And Hold on. we're going to bring up audio only. Yeah for he or she, All right. and if he or she can hear me right now, I'm gonna ask the mystery guest mm -hmm. if he or she can disguise their voice because Russ, Lee, and Sully are gonna ask yes or no questions to guess the mystery guest. Wow. Do you understand? Mystery guest, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Ken Giannola. <laughs> <Why not? laughs> All right, yeah. let's, uh, let's start off with Russ. Russ, yeah. ask the mystery guest uh, some yes or no questions. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking it's it's a it's a rugged woman. Uh, <laughs> is, is this a, Marty Emerald? Susan, <laughs> hey, hey, Susan Golding? No. Um, <laughs> were you in politics in San Diego? I was not in politics in San Diego, California. Uh, Lee, your turn. Yes or no question for the mystery guest. Have you been in broadcasting? Well, I guess I can. I'm so forth, you know, of a kind yes sir. All right, Sully. So oh my goodness! Have you ever been in politics? I said that. Oh, you did? Yeah. Come on. You said politics? Gambling life. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I have another. Yes, one. I'm running for president on the Democratic <laughs> ticket. Have you ever done stand-up comedy? No, sir. I have not. Ah, Lee. Russ. Um, yes or no? Uh, do, do, you, do you? This is from the early pages in Tommy's. <laughs> have you worked with any one of us here on the air? Uh. Directly, I don't think so, no, sir. Have I interviewed you I, before? I, I've seen you all, and I've been in the same building and so forth sometimes. Wow. It's a coach. It's a coach. It's, you think it's a coach? It's a no coach. No way. Do you have all your teeth? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this is not a hockey well, trying to narrow it down here. Uh, <laughs> I never Lee. played for the Mohawk Valley Comets, but <laughs> I am a big fan of Mr. Lee Hapsaw Hamilton. Lee, yes or no question for oh, the Mr. Yes? Darn it. Good. That's a good question because now he's got me stumped. If he knew where I was, then and what I'll I give did a hint. No, I'll wait a second. Right now. Are you Mr. Are, are, are you a coach of some kind, or were you a coach of some kind? No, sir. But I'll tell you what. The Mohawk Valley Comets. Lee Hacksaw Hamilton was the play-by-play -play man, and after he left, they folded up the franchise. He was so good. <laughs> they missed him so much. Yeah. They were nothing oh, without I him. Give up. I, I give up. I have a question. I have a question. Yeah, yeah. I have a question. <laughs> Are you on a legendary morning radio show on 101.5 KGB? Uh, yes, sir. But I don't know about legendary. Is this... Cookie chainsaw. No way! Right <laughs> no. <Yep. laughs> is this is that you cookie? There it is. There it is. No <laughs> way! <laughs> you know, I you know I kept telling you if you oh if you stayed God. in therapy you'd be okay, but oh. you had to do this. Now, oh the reason why we have Cookie Chainsaw <laughs> Randolph on with Lee Hacksaw Hamilton because I want Cookie to tell the story how he received his name in front of you, wow. and I believe. We have your accountant at his door to have him write you a check. <laughs> right, yeah. the, the check. So let's hear the story, Cookie. Well, Lee Haxel Hamilton, just so you know, is and was a legendary figure uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. And in 1981, the baseball strike occurred, and they had the baseball games. In lieu of baseball games, they said, Lee, we need you to fill three hours. So that man you're sitting next to right now, 
he basically pioneered sports talk radio oh, wow. yeah. out of that strike. Because of the baseball strike, we have sports talk radio, <laughs> and Lee Hacksaw Hamilton was the pioneer. Now, I followed him in Phoenix. I got there in 1985, and he was such a huge deal there, and still is in my heart. He's my idol. Um, I did a one-off parody of him from Baja to the Canadian Rockies. This is Cookie Chainsaw Randolph. It was just a one-time bit, one. Yeah. But people started calling me that, and you know how nicknames are. Uh -huh. They're involuntary. And people just call, started calling me Chainsaw, Chainsaw, Chainsaw. All right, okay, you lean into it. Yeah. And so I did. And every time Lee sees me, you owe me a royalty. And I, <laughs> I, See? I, I have a check right here. And when you talk about <laughs> Lee, you just can't. Oh, there it is. Uh, oh, made out. Oh, there it is. He's got yeah. the check. Hey, yeah, first of all, to, uh, this, every time I do this show, it's like I'm in baseball fantasy camp. Because I, I listen to Cookie every single day when I sneak out between my 650 and my 720. Yeah, there he is. Because I get to broadcast from home now, and people think I'm in a studio. I'm running down to Bird Rock Coffee Roasters and coming back to my house. I listen to, it, to Chainsaw. But then, of course, you see Lee, Lee in front of you, yeah. and reminds you of, of why a, a lot of us are in radio because you got us hooked in talk radio. Well, the funny, funniest thing when he told the story about Phoenix, I'd been hired to go to Phoenix in 1981, and I got to Phoenix to do a four-hour talk show. The week I got there, baseball strike, Arizona State was put on NCAA football probation, oh. and. Uh, no, there's another, COVID. Another no, big, wait, that's no, another no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there were, all these things were happening. Yeah. I go on the air the first night, and I got to do four hours every night. And I just went on there, started, and screamed. Right. And <laughs> I, I, I ripped the baseball players, and yeah. I challenged the union. How the hell could you strike? And then I went after Good. Arizona State. How could you cheat there you go. in this great situation? They had four hours of me every night. For 56 days in a row till they wow. settled the baseball. You know, wow. uh, which, I, which I recall, uh, uh, Cookie, uh, w is it your life getting better now that we see a little bit of sports going? And uh, how do you feel about the Dodgers right this very moment? <laughs> uh, Dodgers, smodgers. Okay, it's all about the Padres right now, and uh, that's it. I, we're, we're very, very thrilled. Very thrilled. I mean, w when Lee Hacksaw Hamilton has it ever happened before where you have NBA and hockey playoffs during baseball and, and, and football season? Chainsaw, here's what I wrote on my website. What is wrong with this picture? It is 118 degrees in my driveway in Rancho Bernardo. <laughs> <laughs> I am watching the Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah. What's wrong with right. this picture? Yeah, yeah, exactly good. right. Love Every you, Cookie. Cookie, will you come back on air with sometime, brother? Look, listen, you guys are my Beatles. Are you kidding me? Oh, come my on. Oh, listen to that. I do. Oh. What a, what a great disguised <laughs> voice, too, Cookie. That was the I best one ever. I've got a sworn you out there and a few for deep puffy right now. I'm going out here. <laughs> I really thought it was the guy working aisle three at Vons who was going to yell out <laughs> to the cleanup. <laughs> hey, Lee, when we come back, uh, we're going to tiptoe into the Chargers Super Bowl <laughs> appearance. <laughs> yes. Man. Yeah. What a, is a chance for Cookie. I got Hacksaw. I got good memories. I got you guys. <laughs> I got Cassie B. that game we all met at the stadium in the rain in the yeah. rain and we all greeted the team as, the as, they, came in. as they came into the stadium thousands of people inside yeah. the stadium yeah, yeah. do you remember walking in and how did it feel 62,000 fans when we were on the plane somehow there was communications got back to me 
there's going to be an event at the stadium. We want you to MC it in the end zone when the team comes back. So we got off the buses in the back of the stadium. We walked through the tunnel. Yeah. And the stadium was full. It was 62,000 <laughs> yes. people. It was like a the Monday noise. night football game at midnight. The yeah. noise, the thunder was unbelievable. And then I went up on the podium and I interviewed the players. And the, the yeah. minute I stood and I looked at everybody and I said, show me your lightning bolt. Yeah. The place erupted. And what, what a moment of a and lifetime. I'll always remember watching the Chargers walk in yep. and Natron Means and Junior Seau, were, they were smoking cigars. <laughs> and, uh, and I was yeah. thinking, they must have partied on that plane, and that's my next question, because you're on the team plane. Yeah. How is it on a on a pro football plane? Are, are after they partying? Win and are after they partying? Loss. <laughs> Do you get anything you want? Is this is it bigger than most planes? No, it, it was eerie because it was real quiet. I think everybody was emotionally exhausted. The plane flight home was really quiet. I was I was yeah. stunned. The party began when we got to the stadium, and then the yeah. party went all night, and all the next day, etc. And for us to win, it was a, it, it's the epitome of my career. Yeah. The fact we won where we had not won before, the fact it was the AFC Championship game, the fact it brought the community, it galvanized the community together. Yes. It was just so neat. I the Super Bowl. Let's not talk out. about the game. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, but, but I'm going to ask you something. So when you, on a, on a radio, behind the scenes, inside baseball, no pun intended, when you prepped, your, I remember you prepping your radio show because I was doing radio at the same time on a different station, the same thing. And I would see you prep and how you prepped. And it was basically tomes and tomes of newspapers and articles, and you just sat there and you absorbed everything. On a typewriter. On a typewriter. <laughs> I remember. And I remember you also used to do your show with the door open, which I thought, I want to do that. So I started, I totally copped that from yeah. you. When you prepped for a play-by-play -play, or, or, or a play-by-play -play versus your talk show, was it a different feel for you? Was it a different day prep? I mean, you know, boxer gets up, football player gets up, they have breakfast, they take a nap. What was your day like during a Sunday at, at Charger Stadium? I was working nine days a week because oh, yeah. I was doing a talk show Monday through Friday, four hours a day. Yeah. I was doing San Diego State Aztec football on Saturdays, That's Chargers right. football on Sunday. Yeah. I was meeting myself coming and going in the airport. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I was a regimented guy. I knew how to put it together. I knew how to do my notes. I knew how to do the charts. And I had all the information right in front of me. Wait a minute. But what are those notes and what are those charts? Because when, I'm a, I, when I hear a play-by-play -play announcer, I'm always amazed that they know who the players are. Yeah, how do they remember? They, yeah, do, they, do you have a person in your ear going, you know, that's Steve Finley? No. Yeah. No. On radio, yeah. you have a depth chart that has all the offensive players together. Flip side of the depth chart is all the defensive players. Mm -hmm. I had one legal pad with notes about each player or statistics right. or stuff around the league, and that's what I did. Did I you did. have a couple weird doodles on there too? Like, oh yeah, he caught one in. <laughs> <laughs> because if I could pick up your Lee Hacksaw doesn't doodle. If I could pick up your notes, could I do your job? Well, at least you could read my notes. Now, whether you could do the play-by-play, -play, that's, that's a little no, bit different scenario. Because there's a passion, oh, there's a, a knowledge, there's so I much. I have a question in. about that. When you, because have we have all. Yeah. We've all tried to do it. Mm -hmm. When you we turn the sound yeah. down and try to do play by play, yeah. forget it. How, what, so what are you looking at? Are you like just let you can do, and I know you can do play by play for a pop Warner team you've never seen before. Yeah. What are you looking at when you're up there? <laughs> are you always looking at the quarterback? Are you always, I mean, like how do you start your mind? Your, the Where is mind? the ball? Yeah. Okay. What happens with the ball? Who has the ball? What is the play? It's okay. just the four W's. I'd be saying yeah. things like, that other guy with number seven on him just <laughs> kind of running faster. I was really fortunate. We, we had a three-man crew in the booth. We had three great guys that liked each other, respected each other, and Who gave each other space. I was, I was teamed with the former linebacker, Jim Laslovic, Pat oh, Curran, great and guy. Pat Curran, and they were great. And they yeah. were really different because I painted the picture, yeah. and they colored it in. Laz did a great job. He got much better in radio as he went on. Curran was loud. He was a typical Don Meredith on TV. Yeah. I mean, it was really a fun broadcast. Cool. And we worked together for 13 years, and we had a great, and then just like everything else Dean Spanos did, he left our station, and we all lost our jobs. Uh, and, yeah. and that's what happened, huh? Yeah, exactly. They, did, you, did you know that while we were in the stadium, and many of us were in the stadium, that was we that. had... At the time, there wasn't a Sony Walkman. I think was the mm -hmm. most. I mean, we had earpieces in listening to you. Did you did had, did that gotten up to you guys? Did you know that was going to happen? 
during the play-by-play? -play? Yeah. Did you know that, w that we were listening to as we were live in the stands? No. That happened yeah. all the time. Oh, it was so cool. And right at, the, right at the end of the game, the broadcast on the final play, you guys got to listen to it. You'll get chills. Right. Chills listening to the Cassie B Project. I'll tell you what. Just like another. Oh, over my cell. Lee Hacksaw Hamilton. Just had to touch it. We got, we got more time. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. Hey, baby. We don't mind all the watching. Found my limit, met my match, and you were on my mind. I know when you came searching, I've been so hard to find. Buried in the promises I made to those before. Before I start this path with you, I need to close the door. Though it's hard to give me up my word, I just remember how badly I Let's take our time, but we've no place to be. Give me a chance, and I will make you see. You are the only one, you are the only one that makes me feel alive. You are the only one, you are the only one I truly let inside. So let's take a time. Ba -ba -da 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 -da. Concert, what do we got before he lets out of here today? Hey, You're Gabby. playing in a mall. Here. Come on. <laughs> here. All right. We'll, play it here. we'll do a live yes. stream with you yeah. here. We get that um, figured out. I'm doing a little drive in concert on the 26th. I'll be fun. Um, Where's that at? Unfortunately, not with these guys. But, uh, okay. All right. It's at Cal State San Marcos. All right. And we're doing a Green Day concert. Wow. Green Day. Oh, wow. All right. What's, uh, how do people find you? Are you on Spotify, iMu Apple Music? Yes, or uh, Spotify under Cassie B and the Stingers. Okay. Okay. And also our Instagram um, originals is Cassie B and the Stingers. Okay. And our cover band is Cassie B Project. There we go. All right. Awesome. Just put yeah. Cassie B in Google and you'll yeah, find me. Yeah, you'll her. find me. You guys are awesome. Robert Thanks, Rivera on guitar. Uh, it's Robbie. Robbie. Ryan the Killer. Ryan Kill Patrick. Patrick on bass. Oh, Kill. Good stuff, guys. Cassie B, that's nice. Um, yes, sir. Do you Sorry, remember, I keep talking like our guest. I, you know, <laughs> no, you don't. I don't know why. That's Mighty 690, you were the Mighty 690, right? Yeah. I was, the first, I was the first piece. But it didn't start as a, as a, as a sports Well, oh, it's a legendary music station. Yes. It's a stick. Yeah, yeah. It's a place where Wolfman Jack worked. Do you yes. remember American Graffiti, the movie? Sure. It's oh, Wolfman no, Jack. That's yeah. a takeoff of him working. The Tijuana station. Yeah, it right. was the San Diego station. Do so, a quick impression of Wolfman for us. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, sorry. What oh. an experience. I mean, he was my lead in. When I first went there, what? they were still 69 extra gold. It was rock and roll. Yeah. And they said, you're going to be the first piece of the puzzle. We're going to flip this into news talk sports or all sports. Nobody knew it. I went there. So they were playing music all day. Wolfman Jack and his entourage, they were so much fun to be around. Wait a minute. Wolfman was in the building? Yes. What? Really? Yep. And his entourage, they were in the building, and they were on, I think at that point, 3 to 6, playing music. And then at 6 o'clock, bingo, I came on. I mean, it was the strangest fit in the world. Sure. And that, that <laughs> went on for about a year. But here's the funniest story. When they called me, I was in Phoenix at KTAR in 1987. I'd done the Sun Devils and really established myself as a sports talk icon, as, as Chainsaw would say. They called me one day, phone rings, I pick it up, and this is such and such. Uh, I'm the general manager of Extra Radio in San Diego. We just got the rights to the NFL Chargers. We know all about you. We'd like to talk to you about coming to San Diego, be the voice of the Chargers, and start a sports talk show. Wow. Okay, and I didn't know anything really about the city, except it was cool in the summer compared to 180 degrees in, in Phoenix. Phoenix, yeah. So he, I said, tell me about your station, because I had XTRA. What was that? He said, Mexican license station. Uh, we're going to broadcast out of San Diego. I thought, Spanish license? Mexican tower in, in Rosarito Beach? And I said, wait a minute, time out here. I said, you want me to be the voice of the Chargers and do a sports talk show? Yes. I said, well, I don't speak Spanish. 
Yeah. <laughs> I thought they wanted to hire well, me sure. to, to bring me to Well, yeah. what people don't understand is, is because of, of the marketing joint marketing agreement, you can only have, because the FCC only lets you have so many sticks, so many antennas. Right. You couldn't, so you had to put some, you had to take, borrow some of the antennas. And in fact, 91X was in 91X was right exactly. there. Exactly. So, so at the time, it was JCOR, if I'm not mistaken, or Clear Channel. It was One. Noble Broadcast. Noble Broadcast. Broadcast. Initially. Ed Noble, yeah. Had to rent sticks that were over uh, yeah. over the border to mm -hmm. try to do that. So no, it was such a unique scenario and I got here and Wolfman Jack was my lead in and uh, he was such a neat guy and everything you saw in American Graffiti is pretty <laughs> true. All right, man. Yeah. So anyhow they, they, they <laughs> evolved from sixty nine extra goal. I knew where they were going, nobody else in the building did. Yeah. And then it then it became news talk sports, then it became all sports and we just ricocheted it, up the ratings. And didn't you have a little intern named Jim Rome? or something like that. Jim Rome, Jimmy, little, you know, the management will always tell you, well, we had this game plan. I will tell you the truth. They stumbled upon everybody. They knew me. Rome was an intern, mm -hmm. became the nighttime guy. They yeah. let him do middays. He became a raging success. They stumbled upon Steve Hartman, Chet, Chet 40, 40, Billy Wurndell. Yeah. They became the loose cannons. Yeah. Young guy, old guy, East Coast guy, that West Coast guy. And suddenly we had this tremendous chemistry and it, it, it went for a good 12 years. Wow. And then corporate radio came in, yep. and you saw what they did to the marketplace yeah, and yeah. what they did to all the stations. Up. Well, I love wow. you, Lee. I mean, you're Lee a sports icon. Hamilton, Heard on KUSI Saturday morning. Unbelievable. Will you come back? Well, we can do uh, we, We've had a couple times we've had people come in for a whole other. you got to come back with someone. Lee, Lee Hacksaw you so Hamilton. Much. Liz Hacksaw Hamilton. What is the name of the website, Lee, once again? LeeHacksawHamilton.com. I want to talk sports. Tough to remember, but I think I got it. <laughs> Cassie B, thank you guys. Awesome having you on there. Russ and Sally. Thanks, Bob. Tommy. Yeah. Hold it. Yeah. In the swing of love, let me show you a few things. Show you a few things about love. Hey. I can't wait till I get you on the floor, good looking. Going out so hard, just like nothing. Oh, burn myself. I just had to touch it. And it's all right. And it's all mine. Hey, baby. We don't mind all the watching. Because if they study.